What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Shutter Talk. It has been a while. I haven't done one of these in like probably three weeks. Today we're here with Caroline Hayes. Did I say that right? Yeah, that's right. You got it. 27 years old. So you're like nine, ten, eight years older than me. So I'm ready to pick your brain about everything you've learned because I'm sure you know a lot more than me. Um, <laughs> we've shot together once. When was that? Mm -hmm. uh, that was in Fed. It was before the snow. Yeah, it was so, September. I guess. Some, something around September, right? Sometime around then, yeah. yeah. We did a little funky shoot. I don't even know what it was. It was like some perspective kind of thing, and uh, I don't really know. It was fun, though. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun kind of experimenting with different, you know, different types of shots, different techniques. So. Do you do as much photography, or you're mainly in the video kind of thing, right? Mainly video, um, but I, I've been doing actually a lot more photography lately, like, you know, headshots and that kind of thing, but I do other photography just for fun yeah well yeah mm -hmm. well, that's the thing you kind of i think it's better to choose kind of one because then you could focus but at the end of the day they kind of fluctuate back and forth you know what i mean like a lot of a lot of the aspects in photos have to do the same with videos yeah for sure and it seems you know these days um clients kind of want both yeah a lot of people do anyways so sure that's a thing though like I find like when they do want both it's kind of you kind of overlook one usually photos get overlooked for sure every time I've done then the clients are like oh I want both usually I focus a lot more on the video because the video side can get a lot more meticulous a lot more in-depth kind of thing and the photos are just like snap and go yeah I was just saying you know when clients do ask for you know we want both photo and video I find it's always a good thing to say up front okay I can do that but it's possible that the quality of both are going to suffer if I have to split my attention between, yeah. you know, two different jobs. For sure. hundred percent yeah. agree. Okay. So let's get into it here. I'd love to hear a quick backstory about you, how you grew up, where you grew up, kind of just some, okay. some quick sort of stuff. Sure. So I grew up uh, just outside of Ottawa, just west of Ottawa, a little town called Almont. I've heard of it. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a cute little town. I go back there often. They yeah. actually shoot a lot of movies out there now. How far, Hallmark movies. how far is it from here? Uh, it's about 35 minutes 35 from minutes. That's Ottawa. Not bad. Yeah, yeah, that's not bad. So not too bad. Okay. So I grew up there, went to high school there. Uh, right after high school, I went to Algonquin College and took their television broadcasting program, yep. which was great. It was two years and it was really uh, diverse. Like you learned a little bit about all the different aspects of the industry, which was super helpful. Do, do you know if they still have that program? Because I've been looking at colleges and I, I was looking at one at Algonquin and it's talking about a, a, a two year program condensed into one. Do you know if they still have that exact program or they changed it? So I, I believe that it's been changed now. So it is just the one year program yeah, now, from they, what I've heard. They crush it down now. Which is interesting because when I was there, you know, eight years ago, they were talking about extending it to a three year program which I thought would have been a great idea so people could kind of specialize a little bit more in third year, but uh, I guess they went the other way. Do you find it was already like a lot of work in the two years and now they're making it even like more intense? See, I'm not sure. Like it was a lot of work. It was a pretty yeah. intense program. You know, we'd be there all night sometimes. Um, oh my God. <laughs> but I don't know. Maybe they've, maybe they've removed some of the courses. Well, and, yeah, they like, I'm not sure. They must have made sacrifices have. for sure if it's just down to one yeah. year. But sorry, continue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I went there. Um, then uh, obviously we had to do a placement at the end of at the end of second year in school. So I went to a production company called Affinity Productions and yep. did my placement there. And it just happened to be good timing and they needed some help in the office. So they hired me on as a like an office production assistant to start. Yep. And I worked there for about a year and a half. Um, kind of doing, starting with office PA work, and then I did more post-production kind of as the time went on. Okay. Um, and then from there, I went to work on, you know, one of the bigger shows that's come through town in the last while. It was uh, The Ultimate Fighter Nations, which is like a UFC reality you, show. I think you told me about it. I think I watched maybe yeah. like one little clip of it. It looked cool. It was a really great experience yeah. working on like such a big project with a big crew and being around all of that. I was a camera assistant and kind of shooting the slow motion during the fights oh. and the time lapses kind of for all the transition shots. That's really cool. It was really cool. It was a good time. How long and was that whole from, experience? Sorry. It was about two months. Two months. In total. Oh. Yeah. And we were living up on set. It was just kind of outside of Ottawa where it was shot. So mm. it was really neat to be in that environment kind of so early on. 
Yep. And then from there, I just started doing freelance work and I did some, you know, short term government contracts and then started getting some of my own clients and I've worked on a few other shows. But yep. it's really been it's been all freelance from then on. So, yeah, you're, you're full freelance right now working for yourself. No companies. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. OK. Yeah. Um, now let me get a little more detail because I'd like to know actually how you got into photo and video. Were you into that or sorry, vi- I guess video you started. Were you into that stuff before you saw the Algonquin thing? Did you used to take a lot of photos by yourself or video? Yeah. Shoot video? Yeah, I definitely did. When I was did always, I mean, do you think I don't even remember? I know <laughs> that when I was in when I was in grade eight, Okay. I, had, I went, I had like, you know, however much money I had saved to that point in my life, which wasn't much, <laughs> okay. but I, I spent it all on a little video camera and it had like the little mini tapes. And I oh. remember like from that point on, like I had it all through high school making videos of my friends and snowboard videos. And I've always enjoyed, I've always enjoyed that kind of thing. Well, it's so really... it was just a natural progression. So it's really cool. Career. You were shooting on tapes too. How was that? How was the transition? <laughs> <laughs> How's that transition from tapes to digital? Well, it's a lot faster and easier with digital for sure. Yeah. Um, I remember like, you know, you'd have to sit with a camera plugged into the computer and it would kind of copy in real time when you're using tapes and it was just it was more of a process yeah. but uh i never i never knew that because i was just i'm just a little boy who only shot digital so i never i'll never experience maybe one day i'll i'll shoot i'll i'll, I'll practice shooting tapes but i've never I'll take it way back to film that could be cool yeah oh film would be a whoo that's even harder right because it's like one for i don't even know how it works um Sorry, but uh, you talked about your transition briefly from school to school school to that company. How how was that exactly? Was it so? It was kind of like they just they they took you on easy and you got a job simply like that, or or was it you kind of were like an intern or anything like that? No, well, I was. I guess um, I wouldn't say an intern, but like I did two weeks of placement there, mm-hmm. so it was just. I don't even really remember what I was doing like during the actual placement. I think working on some itineraries for some shoots they were planning and doing some it seemed, mailing and that kind of thing it seemed like a pretty smooth transition for you is it do you think it's usually that easy for people to just smooth to, to, to just slide into to a company like no. that no no i don't think it is usually that easy i think that i was very lucky and it was yeah. just very good timing and i mean i hit it off well with all the people that worked there uh, we all got along really well and I guess they thought I did a good job and it was just that someone happened someone who had been in that company for years and years happened to be moving on to something else at that time so yeah okay it's just luck I think <laughs> would you have any tips for people doing the same kind of transition that that you would have taken in if you were uh, uh, unlucky or does that's not even a word not as lucky well <laughs> So you mean if if after that placement they were like okay great see you later and yeah exactly on my own kind exactly of thing? yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it kind of depends what direction you want to go because okay. there are so many different ways you can take a career in video production. Okay. Um, and it, for me at that point, like I wouldn't have been, I don't think, confident enough to go start getting my own jobs yet. So, hmm. Is it, yeah. I mean, if you feel if if someone feels like they can, yeah, start go getting clients and and start working on their own, I would say just try to get right into that. Um, well, well, I have a lot of friends, or like not a lot of friends, but I have some friends who just would just from the start. They that's all they did. I have a friend who who has a produ- a music video production company now, mm. and from the start, he he would just what well, I have multiple friends actually, mo- mainly in music videos. I wouldn't know for any other other paths. Um, they would just start and they would just go. And they would start for free is what they would do and, right. and yeah. shoot for free. And then, you know, the thing is when you shoot for free, most other clients don't know that you shoot for free. So they start asking you your prices and then and then, and then slowly over time, you use that money, you buy better gear, you get your skills right. up. And, and, and that's kind of the, the technique that they go on to. But as far as... Well, that la- seems... Sorry, Sorry, go ahead. I, I was you- just going to say that seems like a really great you know, way to really get into it and really learn as you're doing it. There's probably no better way to learn. Yeah. Um, but just for myself, I found that I wasn't ready to start doing that. Oh, it's right a away. huge jump for sure. And it's not even that. It's yeah. just like they kind of had the freedom of doing it because, you know, they were young. They kind of like they could live with their parents, things like that. If, right. if not, then you're kind of like stuck. Um, 
you know, you're stuck trying to find a job for a production company or another company. And the thing is, do you think there's a lot of jobs out there nowadays for through these production companies? Because how how like production company doesn't need that big of a team. Like the bigger the better, of course. But depending how many projects they take. Yeah, I, I think feel like that the job, the job. Uh, I don't even know the. There's not a lot of jobs. No, and I think there's less and less at you know traditional production companies. Mm -hmm. What I'm seeing more is, like every business kind of has their own. You know, video or social media person on staff. Yeah, like agency. Um, kind more of. lately, okay. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah, that's a, it's a tough day for us for us creators now. We're gonna have to join up on a it team. Is. <laughs> okay, but it let, is, yeah. <laughs> so when when you sent me that form that I made you fill out, you you talked about your 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 short branded videos. Can you talk mm. me through exactly like what it is and then how you'd go ahead and and make one of those? Because I, I, I think I know what kind of it is, but I'd like to know exactly what. Short yeah, so an example of one that I did uh, this year, or I guess last year now, uh, was for a local organic skincare company. Okay. And they just wanted to tell their story, yep. kind of the story behind the brand and, you know, what they're all about. So that kind of just involved, it involved a few meetings, going to meet with the owner and really talking to her, doing a pre-interview in person with her. Yeah. So I could understand, you know, what she's about and really understand what she wanted to convey with the video. I think that's a huge important thing that I had to learn is just really like meeting someone face to face right at the beginning and making sure you're on the same page with everything and you understand what their expectations are. Yeah. Well, there's nothing there's like they know the brand the best. Right. So like at the end exactly. of the day, like if they had the if you could give them the skills that you have to create videos, they would make a better video. But that's not that's possible, right. yeah. so you have to kind of suck in the information they have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a really fun part of it, I find, is really kind of collaborating with different people and and making their vision come to life for them. I'm sure you cool, learn so, some, some cool things, too, about the brand that most people don't definitely. know. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. That's, you know, that's another cool thing about you know doing freelance video work in general, is you just have so many different opportunities and you learn a lot of yeah. different random things <laughs> um but yeah so i start with a few meetings and then and and plan the shoot you know do the schedule for the shoot and work that all out with them and sometimes it'll involve doing a storyboard okay. to you know if, to really make them more comfortable with where do you draw your own storyboards yeah <laughs> yeah they're not very good but yeah oh they're never i <laughs> they i don't work. think a lot of people are never are, are never really good but yeah okay sorry no. continue yeah, and then I mean that's it, and then we shoot, and then uh, the edit process is always a little bit different for each one. Yeah. For uh, sure. Sometimes the client will want to be sitting beside me for the whole thing as I edit. Sometimes it'll just be a, a back and forth through WeTransfer, you know, online. Oh really? They sit uh, beside you while you edit? Sometimes, sometimes. Like they which... come to your place? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, sometimes. I've never I've never heard of that before. Yeah, it's, it's not my favorite thing usually, but. Uh, yeah. Well, like, I feel you know, like that's a waste of their time for sure because they don't have to be there. That's how I feel too. Like, a usually, wee transfer but... back and forth is the same kind of thing. They just see it in, in steps. Yeah, I agree. And, and what's but, the... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, just sometimes people, you know, really are more comfortable. It depends, you know. Sometimes they just... And sometimes they'll come in just for one session, you know, and, and see what I'm doing and then, you know, feel a lot better to kind of leave it in my hands. Yeah. Uh, it really just depends on the client. Yeah, and at the end of the day, they're the ones paying, right? So they kind of mm -hmm. have the That's upper it. hand kind of thing. Um, what That's it. What exactly, the purpose of the video is to kind of just show off the brand. It's not really an ad, is it, is it, it's kind of like an advertisement, but like not like straight to your face, just kind of telling them what the brand's about. Yeah, it's kind of like just the, the story of the brand, almost like a little mini documentary yeah. oh, um, that it fun. would be used on, on social or on their website just to, just to give their existing clients and their new clients a, a better idea of, of what, what they do what they're trying and to what do. they're about yeah well that yeah. sounds super cool i've never done myself a video like that i kind of as far as the corporate world all i've done is like shooting like restaurants like you know those videos where it's just like shots of everyone in the restaurant with like over music slow motion things like yeah. that yeah mm -hmm. that's all I've, that's all i've done in the corporate world i i kind of stay 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 out of it so it's cool to be able to talk to you about about what what exactly is is working well, i don't know if it's working do you think it's working those kind of videos for people i think so i think 
out of all the, the types of videos that I shoot, like those ones for like local businesses and artists, they just, I feel like they, they have more life to them, if that makes sense. Yeah. They're just, they're real. And I think that realness is what works about them. Yeah, that, that often... people people connect to them. Yeah. Do you ever do you ever talk about that before during the video process or like during before you shoot the videos? Like, what's gonna work or like as far as like you know customer return or or things like as far as marketing goes? Do you ever is that that's a topic right that that gets that gets introduced in the video or they usually take care of that completely? Honestly, usually the ones that I've done. I kind of leave that up to them. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I keep in mind, you know, what. Oh yeah. What sure. may. I do the I do the same. I'm not saying anything's wrong or right. No, I just yeah. Yeah. Um, hmm. Usually, I keep that uh, that kind of thing to them, just because that's not my area of expertise, and yeah, I for sure. You know, I probably wouldn't add a whole lot mm-hmm. at this point, but maybe that's something I will learn more about. Yeah. Well, I think it, I think it is important for us to know about it as in as far as future comes because at the end of the day that's yeah. what a video is doing right it's trying to sell some i don't know sell something on a message sell something on a product um i right. I'm, I'm not very good at it but I, I think people do need to take it into consideration for the future i, I agree for sure yeah and uh, it's kind of like figuring out that balance of you know the marketing side of it and also telling the story yeah and so that's why that's why video is production is so fun because it's just so many things to deal with yeah <laughs> and so much that could go wrong and so much that could go right <laughs> it's very true okay well um do you have any tips for for as far as uh finding clients go how long have you been doing the, fr- the straight freelance thing again uh, i guess about seven years freelancing now seven years so uh six or seven now yeah, yeah. So, so do you have any, do you have any tips for as far as finding clients go? Is it kind of like a thing where it's a fully referral base where client to client or do you ever go like hunting? So a lot, a lot of the work that I've been fortunate enough to have up to now has kind of been word of mouth. People will just refer me to others and a lot of it's gone that way. But now, um, I'm really trying to look for clients instead of kind of just taking what comes to me I'd like to you know go out and find those jobs that I really want to do so I I guess I don't have a lot of advice on how to do that just yet because I'm figuring it out too but what I've been doing is just I kind of created a um, in addition to my website which I need to work on but just a a one pager about what I do what I can provide and then a separate document uh, with rates and all of my equipment and now I'm kind of hunting for people that I want to work for. I'm just looking up online um, companies that I think would be interesting to work for and that I think would possibly benefit from having some video production done and I'm just going to reach out to them. I'm just going to email them and and send them, tell them who I am and send them some samples and I think I'm just going to see what happens with that. I haven't tried it before but... I think I've I've had friends who who've done that. Usually, yeah. they, usually they just do it via Instagram DM. But sometimes you, you never yeah. know. Really, you never know. And I've seen videos where people j- literally go knocking on people's doors and say, "You need videos done." And usually you get a lot of no's. But but once you get the yeah. yes, it's all worth it. Do you, the clients as far as word to mouth go? Was ever like some clients that were like you know, not really fun to work with kind of thing. And then how do you how do you deal with those people? Do you do you, because I, I ask this question to a lot of people is how do you deal with those clients you don't really want to work for? Do you just kind of suck it up and do it? Do you ever take yeah. them on again? <laughs> suck it up? I, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, usually I just I'll suck it up and do it. I well, mean, I guess you don't have a they're, choice. They're paying me, you know? Yeah. But, but then if it, if it goes really bad and, and it was a terrible experience, I will choose not to work with them again. Oh, but for sure. I'll always finish the job, you know, and leave it on good terms oh yeah okay for sure i i I hope i hope you finish the job that they that they are paying for and as far as sustaining clients go is it do you ever get people coming back through that word to mouth kind of thing and and how what would some tips be to make sure that those clients are coming back for people who are you know just entering the field um well i think it's really a lot of it's about like less about the work i mean it's about the work and the quality of the work you're doing but it's about (laughs) the connection that you can make with that client and just make sure that they they feel like they can trust you and you know send them things when you say you're going to send them things and if you can't send an update just communicate and and uh make them feel important because they are yeah and usually they'll want to come back to you yeah so just be nice 
be nice and the do best job advice well and... ever <laughs> just be nice i'm not even kidding though people never take this advice and like in this world nowadays like not a lot of people are just nice to be nice and that's like one of the best things you can ever do i agree yeah wow i'm so i'm so wise <laughs> you are wise i've noticed that <laughs> oh thank you <laughs> i'm not i'm not being you know i'm so humble too <laughs> okay <laughs> Um, so I, this was a question I've been dying to ask you because I've never been on a big set. Some people who are listening to this never been on a big set. I feel like a lot of a concept I always bring up is, you know, Peter McKinnon. Yeah. Yeah. You, I concept I bring up is the Peter McKinnon baby boom. I brought it up in my last podcast is when I kind of, it came to my mind and it's pretty much this whole new generation of, you know, you could say creators, photographers, videographers has sprouted because of Peter McKinnon and the internet. Because before that, and you can tell me this, was there a lot of like video creators and things like that online and things like, like, you know? Not like it is now. Yeah. No, definitely not. I mean, people have always been doing it, but no, I, I've definitely noticed a lot. It's just a lot more accessible now. Yeah. You know? And especially like on Instagram, it's a huge thing. So everyone's a photographer nowadays. Everyone's a, a videographer mm. nowadays. And they all copy the it's same. It's a little scary. <laughs> yeah, it is a little scary. But at the, one thing I do notice is a lot of people are copying the same style and not kind of getting out of the, the, the reach. Like, you know, like as far as right. like if you look at travel videos, it's all Sam Colder style, things like that. Like, of course, there's those, you know, those those sheep, these those black sheep. But I, it's a huge like it's all the same trend, which I find. Um, but that this has nothing to do with what I was saying. <laughs> <It's> not, <laughs> mo- but most people haven't been on big sets. And I know a lot of people, a lot of my friends want to get into you know as far as like filmmaking goes like actual movie production you know short films feature films things like that so what is it like yeah. can you explain what it's like to be on a big set what's the environment are people stressed are people nice and the over experience yeah. the overall experience of you being on that that tv show set yeah i mean it's a totally different game than than a lot of you know corporate work and that kind of thing it's yeah. it's great like i the thing that i really love about being on a, a tv crew is just it goes on for so long and you get to really work well with the crew you know you get to really know them well and and feel like you're a part of a team which you don't always get just you know working on your own doing little corporate videos or social media videos yeah um so it's like a a really nice sense of community there's i mean people do get stressed there's a lot going on and you have to have really good coordinators to kind of keep it all running as it should what are they called Sorry. Um, well like a production coordinate coordinator or um production they kinda, manager they kind of organize everything make sure no one's stressed out the schedule and yeah, okay. yeah yeah and then you'll have like an assistant director who will try to keep everything on time as the day's going on yeah and that's a really important job and it's a really hard job and i would not want to do it <laughs> well it seems um, like there's a lot of parts right a lot of moving parts. that's it there's a lot of moving parts um do you think it's but, easier though being on a, a big team like that? Because I do find sometimes, like you know, I shoot, I shoot, you know, the most I've probably shot with a team of is like a team of four, something like that, team of three. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I, I'm even then, I'm always like, you know, like oh, it'd be so nice if I had like a like an audio guy or something like that. So is it is it nice to be able to kind of have like your own thing to focus on while you're on set? Definitely, definitely. It's it it allows you to do that one job really really well. Yeah. which you need to do in that environment because, like you said, there's so much going on and so many moving parts. You need to be able to just kind of zone in and focus on what you're supposed to be doing uh, to make it all keep running smoothly. Man. So that that is a really cool part of it. That's crazy. I, I, I don't know if I could ever do it. And what was your job on your, on your, on your set? So your... On, on the one that I was talking to you about, the I've done you know multiple TV yeah, shows. Yeah, but talk but about that, the one TV show. That seems the fun. Uf, that UFC one. Um, so I was one of... Four, I believe, camera assistants because there were there were eleven cameras and we were rolling twenty four hours a day. Um, Not on all eleven all the time, but there was always always something being shot. So there was a ton of media and it had to be kept super organized so we didn't lose anything. And it was all being shipped back to Ottawa to be edited. So camera assistant and that part of the job involved, um, like I said, just kind of keeping all the media organized. I so, sit in the control. Sorry. Sorry, I heard that they would keep it on hard drives, right? On um, that show, in or particular, or they would shoot we were shooting onto on hard discs. drives. Sh- uh, this one was onto discs. Okay, so like, yeah. like CDs. 
kind of like CDs. Okay. I'm they're never, like I a, don't know what it is, but. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they're just like, it's, yeah, almost like tape. Like it goes into the camera like tape. It's like a square box almost. Yeah. So where, okay. would you, where would you sleep on set kind of thing? Uh, so we actually had a really uh, nice, really nice accommodations for that one. Uh, we were shooting in a, it was like a resort almost. Oh, These wow. big wood, uh, wood cabins in, in the mountains in Quebec. Uh, so it was pretty swanky, I'm not going to lie. And that, that doesn't nice. usually happen, but we were very lucky. There were these big, beautiful log homes that the crew were staying in for the whole... Well, you deserve it, right? After like 12 hour days or something like that, you get a, get oh, a good night rest. Oh, at least 12 hour days. Wow. Yeah. Oh my God. I remember some, you know, 17 hour days up there. Were you sad when it was over or were you kind of like... I was. Finally. <laughs> You it was sad. a lot of work, so I was happy to have a bit of a break from yep. that. But yeah, I was sad because you're just you're used to you get used to, you know, working and living with these people, and there's always something you need to be doing or thinking of, and and when that's over, it's I don't know, it's a little, little bit of a letdown in a way. But how, how did the whole production come out? Did you ever watch the the episodes? Yeah, it turned out great. Um, it turned out really well, and yeah. everyone was very happy with it. The network was super happy with it. Um, we didn't do a second season just because of, uh, I think at that time, the network that was broadcasting it bought a whole bunch of NHL time. Something happened with the network where they couldn't accommodate it anymore. But I think, uh, it could still come up in the future again. Uh, I'm not sure. I wasn't really on, on the production side of things at all for that one. Did you ever see, did you ever see your, your slow-mo shots make it? Mm-hmm. Did they oh, look yeah. nice? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a cool feeling to that kind of see them really on, cool. on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay, sorry. So let's uh, we're gonna continue on here, and we're gonna wrap it up shortly because it's almost ten o'clock. But um, okay, let's go with your relationship with perfectionism, as far as that goes. On, fr I guess you're on the freelance side. It's not as much personal work you do, so I don't know exactly what your relationship is like with the perfectionism. If you could tell me. Yeah, I do, I think, just in general, tend to be a bit of a perfectionist. But I've learned kind of over the years of doing this that pretty much every shoot you're going to have to, you know, make a compromise or figure something out or, you know, work with what you've got. Yep. So I, how long I, mean, I always try to... How long sorry? do you think it took you to get over that? Because it seems like I, you're eight years in, so I think you, you understand that it's going to pop up. How long, yeah. how long do you think it took you? Like, was it a struggle at the start for sure that you're always like, you know, or was it even before you get into that, you did that program? Did you, did you deal with it? Yeah, I think even, even before that time I did, but, and I think I don't, I wouldn't say that I'm totally over it even now. I don't know if I ever will be, but yeah, it's just kind of lear it. learning how to, how to accept things as they are and yep. just doing the best you can. And if it's not exactly what you envisioned when you, you know, started out, then just being okay with that. It's still a good product. It's still doing the job. It's just, yeah. Is that how you push over? You just say, hey, yeah, you, I got to finish the job. Yeah. Got to yeah. finish the job and I'm going to, I mean, do everything I can to make it. Okay, this is another thing about kind of perfectionism. I'll often have an idea in my head about how someone's video should should be. Yeah. And the client won't like it or they'll have a different idea. Yeah, I hate that. And it's <laughs> yeah, it's it can be frustrating, but it's also learning how to you know, put all of the ideas together to make something really effective and, and great. Oh, for sure. And it's not going to be exactly what you pictured. It probably never will be. Oh, it but... never will be. I think I've had one or two situations where it came out pretty close to how it pictured, but there was not yeah. a lot of there was not a lot of other people involved. But when there's other people involved, people are always throwing their ideas around. This, 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 and you know, it 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 can be it can be a struggle. Do you have that in your contracts? Because one thing my friend has in his contracts is he gets the final say in the in the thing and i don't know if a lot of people have this because then you can deal with like other people kind of being like oh but i want this but in the end like you have the legal say in what the product looks like that's interesting i don't have anything like that in my in my okay. contracts yeah but uh i don't know if it's a good thing to put in your contract or not but but uh <laughs> i just i just thought i'd mention it because because we were talking no about that's that. interesting yeah, yeah that's interesting for sure i 
Well, he's had he the clients he deals with sometimes are little like one time he had like some guy bring his friend and his friend was not even a director but he was like yeah i'm the director i'm gonna direct this but like you know you're not even part of like he just brought his friend and his his friend was like saying all this stuff so he he has he has had to deal with it before so i think that's why he put it himself but if you haven't dealt with it and your clients are fine as far as the corporate world goes too i think it's a lot more professional music videos low, low budget music videos is a lot less professional and a lot more you know run and gun raggedy kind of video production well, and there's a lot more, I would think, like passion in, in that kind of thing, too. So people are probably more, you know, yeah. do want to push their own ideas more in that kind of more artistic yeah. type of production, I would think. Whereas in corporate, it's just about, you know, oh. usually just like the communicating numbers. a message and exactly in the numbers. And yeah. oh, so yeah. I, I can see that coming up in, in that kind of work. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's an interesting industry down there. But yeah. Uh... <laughs> uh we we talked about this briefly at the start um do you find there's not a lot of work in ottawa anymore for us creators and have you been to like toronto and montreal and done jobs there and can you compare those or let me know i haven't done i haven't done a lot of work in toronto or montreal i've heard that it's quite challenging actually to get work in montreal oh, really? and i don't know if that's i don't know if that was just kind of about like the movie industry there like the the bigger productions yep. um or if it has to do with the corporate world too but i heard that if you're uh, if you speak English, it's it's hard, and it's not that there isn't the work, but it's just they would rather have francophones. Oh, for sure. And I've just heard that. That's not like from my personal experience, but I well, I did I one. Haven't... I did one job in Montreal. Mm-hmm. It wasn't really like super corporate. It was just kind of like a, a restaurant shoot. I drove there super late and, and shot it. But but I a hundred percent. I saw there was a there was a barrier. I do speak French, but it seemed mm-hmm. like all of them were speaking English to me, and like all of them seemed like you know. I was like this guy from like far away. I think a local, pro- yeah. that's, that's the thing. A local production team is a lot, people would prefer that over a, over a person who has to, you know, drive and chance of being late and things like that. Yeah, for sure. I but I know. find, I find there's, there's lots of opportunities in Ottawa. Um, yep. There's just a lot of different, just different ways to take it. And I you know a lot of people well, I think a lot of people these days actually do like shoot and edit. Um, oh yeah, which which opens up a lot, you know. I think everyone, can, a lot of people do that now. Yeah, and that wasn't always the case. It's kind of like our generation and like you know your generation that's uh, starting to do that. Well, one a thing, lot of the guys that I, sorry. sorry, sorry, go ahead, you go first. Just gonna say a lot of the older, you know, like my colleagues that are older and that have been in the industry for 20, 30 years, they'll they specialize in one thing. They're just shooters or yeah. they're just editors. Yeah. And I think that makes it harder to find jobs. Yeah. I think I, um, I agree. I agree with you. I think it's it's a lot harder if you're specialized, but it's it's better because you're specialized. It's it's weird, but I think a reason a lot of yeah. people are editors nowadays is because with social media, everyone's shooting making their own stuff. Everyone's a photographer nowadays, taking photos and, and using Instagram, you know, editing to edit their photos, things like that. As far as video mm-hmm. goes, like that, you kind of have to get more deep into. But like a lot of people can get into the photography industry super easily nowadays because yeah. everyone's a photo, everyone's a photographer and an editor as far as like Instagram comes. And I, th- I don't know a single person who doesn't have Instagram other than like my dad. <laughs> yeah. So that's the thing. I think nowadays with social media, it's kind of created this whole thing where it's so much more accessible to be a photographer, be a videographer. Yeah, I agree. And and that in itself kind of has, you know, opens up more opportunities for people because, you know, companies, every company has Instagram and every company needs content for yeah. there's there's Instagram and social media. So some people make a living just doing social media videos yeah. for companies. Yeah. So that's a whole new thing that okay. wasn't around 10 years ago. Yeah. And five years so ago. So I think there's there's lots of, yeah, exactly. So I think there's lots of opportunities if you just kind of can get creative and, and not be picky and know where to look. Yeah. And also, um, this might not be for everyone, but a lot of government departments are do look for um, short-term mm. video people. Never like thought on of a that. Three or four month contract. I, I did a few of those kind of earlier on um, and they were great just to... You know, okay. have some steady work for a while and, and do some video in-house and yeah that, i've never not, I, not I the didn't most think exciting of that. but hey yeah. 
if it gives you if you get you the money that you need to buy the gear to do what you want that's it. then you're mm. good to go okay we're gonna mm-hmm. wrap it up i have three questions that i ask every single person number one okay. is your go-to camera setup right now let us know what you're shooting on i guess you're actually shooting on it right now but what do you am right now what do you used to, <laughs> what are you using to shoot <laughs> So I have a Sony a7S II Ooh. and I, I use Canon lenses because okay. I used to have uh, Canon cameras. So I've, I've kept those lenses. Uh, do you plan to trade them over? I don't know what I plan to do just yet. I want to see what the new Sony camera is like okay. and if I'm going to stick with Sony or not. I've got some decisions to make on that. But do it's you, been it's worked very well for me for years. Do you setup. like Sony? How long have you had that? You've probably yeah. had that a while then. A, a while, yeah. I think almost three years now. Wow. So... It's been it's been good for that whole time. Well, if you're ever selling your Canon lenses, I need some. And are wait, okay. are they full frame? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me know. Um, but okay. the question, next question is uh, uh, dr- your dream camera setup. Do you have a, a camera and maybe a lens combo that you you are looking for right now, or are you just kind of happy with what you got? No, I mean I'm happy with what I got, but it's always uh, it's always nice to use, you know, bigger cameras. The Sony uh, FS7. Okay. is a great camera what's the most um, expensive be... camera you saw it on uh probably a red epic ah, or red epic. yeah probably the red epic <laughs> what's yeah. it, what's it like what's it feel like what's it feel it feels heavy it's legendary oh it's heavy yeah no it, <laughs> it feels heavy um i'm sure it is i remember being really nervous to to use it when when it's I like first, fifty thousand know. dollars right yeah something like that i mean something like that i mean it's yeah it's, it's the price of a car <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay. I remember being nervous because I was hear, like hearing that, and I was quite young when I used it, hearing that everyone uh, was saying the menu is like super hard to navigate and it's really confusing, but I found it was like very intuitive and yeah. easy to use. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, well that's one job as the, the camera operator, right? You got to kind of know the camera. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Um, do you want to let people know the future of you, what you plan to do, and then you can plug your Instagram, things like that? And uh, if you have a mantra, I don't know if you had a mantra. You can let people know your mantra. Yeah, it has <laughs> nothing to do with, with film production. It doesn't matter, so bro. Just, I'm not, leave that. No one, none, none of the mantras have to do with film production. So. All right. All right. So uh, I don't know. I think, you know, for the next little while, I'm going to stick around Ottawa. I'm Sounds going good. to try to do some, some more videos for local companies. I really am about that connection and I'm about telling stories. And that's kind of where I want to take my work, um, more in that direction and, and maybe a little bit less, mm-hmm. you know, corporate kind Beautiful. of headshot kind of, you know. And uh, my mantra, explore the secrets of the physical universe. And you can take from that what you will, but that is something that I like to live by. I love it. And do you want to plug, <laughs> do you want to plug yourself? I'll, plug, yeah, yeah. I'll, put you in the, I'll, put, I'll put you in the show notes anyway, but go ahead. So it's at Carhays on Instagram, C A R R H A Y E S. What how'd, how'd that come up? It's just Cara. Is that like for short? No. Well, Caroline is my name, and then yeah. my middle name, my middle initial is uh, starts with an R. So okay. C A R. Yeah. I don't know. You, you can't change it now. It's too late. Well, it's not too late, not. but most people know you like that. So I'm not changing it. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for being on the on the show. Hope you enjoyed. Yeah, it was great talking to you, Dax. Thank you for having me on. No problem. This has been Shutter Talk with Dax Brule. Have a good rest of your day.